Hi, Casey Smith here with SAS R&D. Today I'm going to show you what's new in SAS Studio. We've got a lot of content to cover, so let's jump right in. Today I'm going to be covering SAS Studio 5.2. 5.2 shipped in November with VIA 3.5, so it's been available for a few months. It is a minor version increment. Our previous version was 5.1, but 5.2 packs some major new features, many of which I'm going to demo today, including the new query interface, the Git integration, import data wizard, reintroduction of file system navigation, the data step debugger, job integration, both scheduling and background submits, and last but not least, quick filtering. There's a number of compelling features that are new to 5.2 that I won't get to today including new and enhanced tasks. So I highly recommend checking out the What's New in SAS Studio 5.2 Help Topic and the User's Guide of the Online Documentation. You can access that from the Help Center from within SAS Studio. So let's get straight into the demo. Here I've got SAS Studio 5.2, and the first thing you'll notice is this new Start page, which welcomes you into the application. In fact, I'll use that to start a new query. When I click New Query, you'll see a new query tab opens up. I can select the Add button to select data sources. However, I prefer to multi-select tables in the Libraries pane on the left-hand side and drag them into the query. Once I drag them in, you'll see those tables are added, and then I can expand them and select variables that I wish to add to my query. I'll select a few from the first, and I'll select a few from the second table. On the Join tab, you'll notice that a join has already been identified for me because it recognized those variables with the same names in both, in both tables. I can choose from one of the predefined join types, or if I wish to provide an advanced join expression, I can do so in the Join Expression Builder. On the Filter tab, I can drag a variable over and specify a filter. I've got a number of comparators. I could type a value or I can retrieve the distinct values for this variable, which I'll do and apply that filter. And then if I wish to sort by a variable, I could do so or provide output options, whether I want to create a table, a view, and where I wish the output to land. If I look at the code, you'll notice it's generating proc SQL. The new query task also supports PROC FED SQL. So if I go to Options, Preferences, Query, you'll notice there's this Generate FED SQL checkbox, which I can check, and then that will result in the query generating PROC FED SQL instead. Otherwise, I run it like any other task. I click the Run button, it runs the code, generates a log, generates the output data set, which I can then view at the bottom. So it's a point-and-click interface for querying. The next thing I want to show you is the Git integration that we added to 5.2. Git was in SAS Studio 3.8 and in Enterprise Guide. We've added very similar functionality to 5.2. So here I've got a blah.sas program, which I'll open. You'll notice the folder that it exists in is SAS Programs has this weird icon and if I hover over it, it says Version Control Repository. That icon indicates that it is a Git repository. And you'll notice there's a similar Git icon for a pane, for a new Git repositories pane. And if I select that, you'll notice the SAS program's Git repository is already open in this pane. I've already cloned this repository. I could clone a new one from GitHub, Bitbucket, or any other remote location or I could add an existing one that's already been cloned that may already live on my server. In this case, I'm going to work with the SAS programs that I already have. So if I double click it, you'll notice that a new SAS programs repository pane is opened. And it shows me that there are no changes currently unstaged or staged waiting to be committed. If I click on the history tab, it shows me all the commits that have been made in this repository. You'll notice my master is currently one commit ahead of the remote origin master. So if I go to this program, blah.sass, and I'll make another change from hello world to hello Casey, and I save it, and then I go back to my repository pane, you'll notice 
when I select the Commit tab, it automatically detects that I've made a change to a program in my repository. If I select that program, then I get a preview of the differences that were made. You see where I changed it to Hello Casey. I can stage those changes, and then I can enter a commit comment changed to Hello Casey, commit those changes, and then if I look at the history view, you'll notice that my local master repository is now two commits ahead of the remote origin repository origin master and if I select it again I still have the preview at the bottom at this point I could push my changes to master or I could pull from master in case any of my colleagues have made changes to the programs in this repository I could also create branches off of any commit if I wish to work out of a feature branch to add a new feature or fix a bug and um, so this is really the the Git integration in a nutshell it is a wonderful way for organizing the lifetime of programs changes to programs over time in a structured way which is wonderful when you're collaborating with colleagues next let me show you the new import wizard there's a couple ways to access it one is from the new menu you can click new import data um, I prefer to find the file that I wish to import inside the Explorer pane, in this case gas.xlsx, right click and say import data. It opens the new import wizard with the data pre-selected as well as some default output location. If I look at the generated code you'll see that we're generating proc import to do the import and then proc contents to report on the imported data. I'm just going to run it like any other task. It generates a log the results of the proc contents and the output data set that actually gets created. So a very quick and convenient way to import data. You may have also noticed while, while I was showing that feature that I was navigating the server file system. And this is something that was sorely missed. In 5.1, you were only able to navigate the SAS content location. In 5.2, you are now able to navigate both the server file system as well as the SAS content location and store content in either one. The next thing I want to show you is the data step debugger. The data step debugger is a really neat feature that existed in SAS Studio 3.8 and an enterprise guide and it works very similar now in Studio 5.2. Here I've got a SAS program with several data steps. If I click the debug button in the toolbar you'll see it highlights the sections of code that are debuggable in this case data steps if I click the bug next to one of those data steps it launches the data step debugger and then pauses on the first line of execution at this point I can start stepping through the data step or I can toggle breakpoints and continue and execution will break on those breakpoints you'll notice on the right hand side I see the variables in the data step and their current values. Any ones that are colored red, that indicates that they have changed since the last time execution was halted. Rather than doing breakpoints, I could set a watch on a variable. In this case, I'll do running horses. And now if I continue, execution is going to break every time this running horses variable changes. And of course, if I want to enter more advanced debugger commands I can do so in the command line at the bottom. So very convenient way for stepping through data step code and debugging it. Next I want to show you the job integration that was added in Studio 5.2. Jobs in the VI world are synonymous with stored processes in the V9 world. They are SAS programs with optional parameters that do work um, and are particularly useful for end users who may not be familiar with SAS programming. So let's start with some examples. Here I've got some jobs. I'm going to open one up called Hello World and you'll see it consists of code, in this case a simple data step that outputs some HTML and it also has an HTML form 
where it receives some input that is used in that code. So let's just run it to see what it does. When I run it, you'll see it presents me the, HTML, the user, the HTML form. I'm going to change the value and run this code. And now it is taking that user input and using it inside of the SAS code. And you'll see it simply substituted in the HTML output that was generated by that data step. But let's look at a more advanced one. Here's another job a dynamic that's using dynamic prompts. You'll see we've got a couple macro variables, make and type, and we're using those in a proc SQL and a proc report. We still have a prompt, but in this case, it's not an HTML prompt, it's task prompt. And this is common task model XML, the same format that is used for writing custom tasks in SAS Studio, so it's very extendable. If we run it, we'll see we have the user interface and it is dynamically populating the vehicle makes. So if I select Mercedes Benz and you'll notice now it is also cascading. So based on my first selection, it is running another query to populate the vehicle types for Mercedes Benz. And so once that has been populated and I select two values, I can then submit this job it uses those inputs to the code and then returns the results to the user. So again, it's a very convenient way for, for creating interfaces for end users that may not know SAS code. All they have to do is specify the values and they get the results. Another really nice thing about jobs is that they can be scheduled very easily. So for example, if I right click a job, I can click schedule job and it brings up an interface in which I can choose a frequency and a time in which I want it to run. If I wanted to create a new job, I could do new job definition or a form. When I click new job, you'll notice I can specify the code that I wish to parameterize. I can optionally associate a form with it if I want there to be a user interface. I can set job properties and I can define parameters for the job. In addition to being able to schedule jobs, you can also schedule programs. So for example, if I've got a program.sas, I could right click and say schedule as a job. And what we are doing is actually creating a job with that code behind the scenes. It is a non-parameterized job in this case, and I specify a period or a time in which I want that to run. Similarly, we have a background submit. And when I click background submit, we are creating a job and running it immediately rather than scheduling it. And when you run a background job, it does show up in the submission status pane. And then as soon as it is done, you'll notice I got a toaster indicating that it was complete. I have now a program.html and a program.log in the same folder as my program.sas file. I can then double click those to open them and view the results or view the log. Last but not least, I want to show you the quick filter in data sets. So if I open a table and right click any column header, now you'll notice there's this quick filter menu item. And it looks very similar to the filtering in the query builder. I've got a number of comparators. I can specify a value or get the, the unique values. And once I select one and I apply a filter, you'll notice the data grid is then filtered to records that match that criteria. There is a breadcrumb and I can close that, remove that breadcrumb and then the filter goes away. So this is a quick rundown of some of the new features in SAS Studio 5.2. I hope you will have time to play around with it. And I highly recommend, again, going back to the what's new topic and the user guide for more information. Have a wonderful day.